What's going on everyone, Jeremy here from The Quartering, bringing you hopefully an epic fourth video today. Certainly it will be unplugged and unlikely to gain garner favor from the, uh, the bots that are viewing these videos. But as always with the fourth video, uh, please if you can, make sure you leave a like and a comment on it. And if you use Twitter or Facebook, give it a share so that the other subscribers can see it because YouTube does not send four notifications in a day. In fact, it rarely sends the three they're supposed to. But I just wanted to welcome you to day 27,468 of Goobergate. Uh, it never ends. It will never end. In fact, there was a recent article this week bringing it up all over again. And this time around, uh, friend of the show, friend friend of frenemy of me, um, Sophia also covered it. And I figured, why not laugh together? Now, this article from Vox, which came out on the 20th yesterday, what we still haven't learned from <laughs> They should have armed us against bad actors and bad faith arguments. It didn't. Well, that's because in my experience, uh, those that were on the pro side or anti, I get it confused. You know what I mean? The weirdo side. Um, they were the ones that were doing most of the bad faith arguments. So obviously, if you don't look inward and you don't examine uh, your own uh, failings, then you're not going to learn from it. Uh, it's natural to assess what socio-cultural lessons we've learned from the previous decade. Now that we've entered the new one, by the way, these people, good lord. I, I, if there's like a Venn diagram, I'm sure people that are still talking about GG and people that have TDS, there's like significant crossover. These people seem to have grown up their entire life and never learned how to take an L. Uh, certainly, those people still talking about GG in this manner can't accept the fact that they took the L. The same reason these crazy people still can't take their L from 2016. You never move forward when you're constantly looking back. Uh, whether that that uh, whether they're the kinds that might help us make the 2020s better, an era. No honest attempt has been has at such a t an attempt can be complete without grappling with the messy human dramas and increasing trend towards polarized incendiary conversations that emerged in the latter half of 2010. By the way, uh, polarizing language and, and arguments and heated uh, debates is not new. Uh, the thing is, uh, this uh, oftentimes I think for, is uh, failed to be mentioned by a lot of these people. Social media makes all this worse. You know, most of us just go on and during our day and exist and have fun. And uh, maybe we get into a little spat here or there. But at the end of the day, we're all moving on. Uh, but Twitter seems to reward where you get in these threads and you're constantly getting notified. Oh, someone else posted. Oh, someone else posted. It's designed like the pellet in the with the hamster or the mouse to train you to want to keep going back and opening that app. So when you open a thread about GG, for example, it goes unending forever. And you're just one of these lame brains that uh, live and breathe Twitter. Uh, you never get past it because you're always being reminded. You know, mute the thread. And that can be good advice for regular, just everyday living too, if you don't use Twitter. By the way, if you do use Twitter, make sure you're following me at The Quartering because I ask people every morning what topics you want today. And this one was highly suggested as well. Um, as it was happening, many, many members of the media were quick to dismiss it. Sparked by a single blog post published in 2014, GG was still very much alive when an editor asked me as a reporter, <laughs> reporter um, who covered it since the very beginning to write a recap of it near the end of the year. The editor wanted a piece that framed the entire event in the past tense, even though the hashtag was still growing strong. The women it targeted were still being harassed, and the supporters were planning offline actions to take at upcoming geek conventions. No, no bad things happened. No laws were broken. We all know this to be truth. It doesn't stop people from writing these articles to continue to lie. Soon after I recapped it, other publications wrote about it as if it were more or less over too. It never ended for these people, did it? One predicted that 2015 would be the year everyone forgot about GG, noting that it is still around as a Twitter hashtag and a forum topic, but the relevance is waning from its peak in the fall. That's going to keep happening. 
that did not keep that did not keep happening. But the media's insistence that it would provides a, a key insight into why GG endured and why it ultimately coalesced into the larger alt right movement that helped fuel the election of President Trump. I called it. I called it. See, I think I understand um, the way these people think. And it's difficult. I have to really try to put myself into a different kind of mind-altering state, uh, shave off a few IQ points, and completely ignore common sense. But I think what it is is these people view anybody who might be conservative as alt, right? That's because they smear that's their smear. These people rely so heavily on identity politics and compartmentalizing their their uh, their foes that uh, everyone becomes. It's like the the millennials guide to, and then it's like everyone I dislike is the hankity hankity schlankity guy with the mustache from Germany. Uh, it's such a reductive way of thinking. What it is, I believe, is when you dismiss your intellectual opponents or people who you just disagree with on certain topics, and then you call them whatever boogeyman word is hip for that day, uh, you never train your mind to actually be able to vet out your own thoughts and ideas. And so when you spend your life dismissing everybody who disagrees with you as just like a It'd be like if I called everyone who disagree with my takes an SJW, which in case you've noticed, I've kind of stopped doing because not everyone who disagrees with me is an SJW. Just like for them, not everyone that disagrees with them is all right. You know, it's so ridiculous. It's an absolutely self-imposed shelter and bubble style of living. And that's why these people are still writing 20,000, 30,000 word essays about how they just never got over it. Now, when you look at a more, in my opinion, realistic take by it and uh, by Sophia Narwitz, by the way, excellent friend and uh, bully of mine, she wrote that the twin queens of Gigi turned feminist victimhood into a career, then cheated their followers. For the better part of the last decade, two women have parlayed supposed uh, bad behavior from gamers and threats into wealth, fame, and a reputation at odds with their actions. Will uh, Anita and Zoe ever be held to account? No, of course not. They never have in their entire life. Anita was an online pioneer, a certain type of feminist game criticism that appeared to dismiss most games as a form of digitalized misogyny and hated playing all of them. While Quinn was a developer with a thin track record, but a flair for drawing attention on the internet when GG happened. An avalanche triggered in August 2014 by a single account of Quinn's supposedly unscrupulous personal behavior. GG was the moment that a prevalent but culturally marginalized hobby came to age as something that truly mattered. A full-scale battle of words, denunciations, firings, cleaved gamers, developers, and journalists into ethical or corrupt, the normies and the basement dwellers, the abusers and the targets, those who believed the games were fine and needed to serve only as entertainment, and those who wanted to uproot the industry to better represent political beliefs. And we can look through all the things here. How about just looking at Zoe here? On October 26, 2016, she launched a Kickstarter for a full motion video game. It will go on to raise a respectable $85,000. At the time of the announcement, it was boosted by many gaming blogs and news websites. Conveniently for her, the incestuous nature of the medium took hold. And writers she's hung out with on multiple occasions were able, uh, were among those who helped market her project to the world. All under the guise of journalism and a move on their part, which would no doubt help the project go above the original asking price of $69,420, lol gamers. As per the pitch, the game was almost a year into development and near completion as estimated delivery date was February 2017. Fast forward to now, no game has ever appeared. The last official update occurred over 500 days ago on August 30th, 2018, when Zoe informed backers that the project had run out of money. Incidentally, the very same moment she told people who'd given her 85 grand that she was broke, Oh, that she was broke. She was in Japan traveling luxury. Perhaps not not so surprisingly, the same media entities that were quick to boost her project to the masses have never once reported on the status of the game. As per many conversations with the source who've worked on it, they called it, quote, a failure. And we see here evidence of her trip to Japan. By the way, I would love to go to Japan. I would love to go there. Obviously, we know everything with uh, Zoe and Alec that happened. And, and we just talk about, here's another example. 
The loss of Femme Freak funds hasn't appeared to hit Anita too hard. As outside of her activity within the organization, she tour tours the world and gives speeches. This coming April, she will be embarking on a mini speaking tour in Europe, which is a potential windfall as her average speaking fee is $20,000. Grace with the ability to travel at will, she even takes part in events like Joko Cruise as a featured guest. And this past December, she toured parts of Africa on what appears to be a trip of leisure. Her trans co-host, Caitlin Petit, is another story, however. As Anita was spending a beautiful holiday abroad, Carolyn was seeking work and struggles to afford her self-described cheap cup of daily coffee, let alone her rent. She, From the looks of it, she had to apply for work at a local grocery store and is struggling to get by. This is a woman who worked with Anita for years, who still volunteers at Feminist Frequency and works on their podcasts and such. But by all outward appearances, it doesn't look as Anita is doing anything to do with her situation. We can see the tweet here. I'm kind of glad that while she's on vacation in Morocco. From the very beginning, the manipulative grift of Anita was pretty obvious. One in her earliest Tropes vs. Women Games episode, she caused a controversy with misinformation she spewed. In a video titled Women as a Background Decoration Part 1, she twists facts and misrepresents games to a shocking degree, all to push her agenda, an agenda that has been shown to be quite hypocritical. A core argument of her content is the dishonest depiction of women, so it says a lot that her channel's own art thins the hosts and makes them ten times prettier. And you can see the comparison here, which is hilarious. In the recent Polygon article, she repeatedly brings up marginalized people, marginalized people, namely trans folk. Yet, her funding of Crash Override and staff testimonials means nothing. She didn't quite care enough about whether or not they were treated well. Likewise, she makes thousands on speaking tours while her co-hosts struggle to get by. She can tout being, quote, woke and pretend she cares, but it seems she just builds, uh, she just builds projects up to boost her own name and then watches them die as she sapped all she can from it. Funny how Zoe and Anita have benefited from various projects to a much greater extent those uh, than those they work with as a reflection of the vanity which brought them here in the first place. And I'll, I'll leave the rest of this article for you to read, which is on RT.com. Yeah, it is interesting, right? For two people who talk endlessly about raising others up, it sure seems like they've done nothing to help even the people closest to them, the people in their life that has helped build everything they have, who's helped them from the very beginning, reduced to begging groceries. Not very effective, but I guess they wouldn't care while they're on expensive trips to Japan and Morocco and getting huge speaking fees from people for God knows whatever reason. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this will end, although Lord knows I don't think it ever will. We'll talk to you again real soon.